Jimmy Thang from Maximum PC here at Computex 2015. I'm here at Intel Suite speaking with uh, Francois, Principal Engineer at Intel. And Francois, uh, this is, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at Broadwell right here. Can you tell us a little bit more about Broadwell? So Broadwell is something that you guys have asked about 18, 20 months ago. You were very vocal when we had it on mobile and you told us, hey, we absolutely want this in desktop. So we basically follow up and made this processor available for you guys and for everybody who likes gaming. Gotcha. So, I mean, you know, Broadwell's on uh, uh, Z97 platform, right? Yes, it is, and it's basically the same platform as uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So you can upgrade from uh, what you had before to this new uh, edge processor. Okay, and I think a lot of people are wondering. Um, it, I think Broadwell is sort of a, in a weird place because you know it debuted. I think a lot of people feel like it was sort of meant to be a, a mobile processor, and you know started off that way. And you guys brought it to desktop. Um, can you sort of talk about the philosophy of of taking a, what is essentially a mobile CPU and, and moving it to the desktop? So basically, this this mobile processor uh, got you know tuned for desktop, but you know the target is people like Indonesia. You know, yesterday we had the Indonesian people in here; they were super excited because they, they saw they can play League of Legends, uh, World of Warcraft, and a lot of games now without having any graphic cards. It just you know with a reasonable price platform, you can have some serious entertainment. So that's what we were trying to to achieve with this platform. Yeah, you guys, uh, you know, with Broadwell, you guys are really pushing uh, integrated graphics. Um, well, you know, we were taking the lead, correct? We, you know, the numbers show that we are faster than any other integrated graphic on the market today. And we are really proud of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, good new step for Intel. Okay. And, you know, you know, speaking of the competition, AMD, you know, recently unveiled their Carrizo APU and you know AMD prides itself on having really high-end integrated graphics but you think you guys can give them a run for their money? Well you know we're going to try you know we're always <laughs> we're competing fairly you know very nicely and uh, you know x86 is very healthy right now if you look at the entire both sides of the story it looks pretty good. Okay and then uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, CPU performance uh, what kind of you know differences are we gonna see between this and like Haswell? I know that Broadwell is, I think, capped off right now at 65 uh, TDP? Yes, so we have met improvement in the TDP. So you get about the same performance, but with lower TDP. And you go a bit 5% faster on the CPU side. So it, it does pretty okay, uh, you know, be, being better than previous generation. It's, uh, it's exciting to see that we could take the amount of TDP down dramatically compared to the previous one. So cheaper cooling, and it's, it's all good for you know, people that try to make a gaming machine for a little bit cheaper than what they do usually. Okay, and then when you say like 5%, that's like sort of clock for clock, right? Yeah, so okay. to clock. It's, uh, that's what you can expect. You, so you have a, a large uh, L4 cache in this, this platform, so because of the large cache, uh, you're going to be able to see improvement if you have a couple of scientific programs that use lean pack or those kind of algorithms, you'll see a bit better performance too, like 20% is the best case. Uh, but, you know, in gaming, the cache will help you as well dramatically, so that's why it's there for graphic. So what kind of performance gains uh, do we see on the graphics side uh, compared to Haswell? So, uh, if you go online, look for the numbers that everybody's publishing right now, you see from, uh, I think, 38% faster than the closest on, you know, up to 38%. And um, if you look against as well, that can go about 70, 80 percent. So okay. it's a pretty big gap. Okay. And like, is Intel trying to, uh, you know, eventually trying to like replace or mitigate the need for a dedicated discrete card someday? No, you always you know, <laughs> for the high end. You know, I love my NVIDIA card when I go for a very big screen on my AMD card. You know. We are, we're not trying to replace anybody here. We just, you know, we believe that for mainstream people don't need them anymore. But you know, in top end, you know, everybody needs one. If you if you do some crazy, very high end gaming stuff, being on the edge, you need them. There's no doubt about it. Okay. And so, who would you say, um, you know, this Broadwell platform is for? Like, what is who's the market? I know you touched upon like, you know, some of the Asian countries. Um. So, if you want to play game, you have a limited budget, and you want to have fun with, you know, the mainstream games that you know the most downloaded, game, League of Legends, and all those kind of things. Now you can go with this platform. You don't need to, to get anything else. You just 
Make sure you balance it, put a good SSD to have a good user experience when you play around, and, and then you'll be good to go. Okay. Um, uh, might we see something that's higher TDP than 65 watt in, in Broadwell? Uh, I'm an engineer, I don't do any announcements, so I <laughs> cannot do this one. Sure, sure, I had to ask. And then uh, what, is the, what are the clock speeds on the, on the high-end i7? So the high S7 is a base that's 3.3 GHz on turbo up to 3.9 and uh, you can overclock it a little bit. Um, it's not a beast of overclocking but it does pretty well. So. Okay, cool. Is there anything um, you know else you want uh, our readers to know about Broadwell? Mm, no, it's just you know it's a good processor. We are very proud of it and you know, we are very happy that for the first time, we are leading on the graphic integrated side. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm running some benchmarks in the background, so I'll go back and see how that is. Uh, another thing you mentioned earlier, um, you know, today off camera is, you know, you're talking about uh, video game performance and how like SSD speeds, uh, you know, storage really matters for game performance, and that is something that we generally don't think about. Yes. So I was showing you uh, basically uh, Ubisoft uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, and a lot of people online has complained that you get a lot of jerkiness out of Unity. And in fact, if you upgrade with a 750 Intel SSD, or the, the small one or the big one, you figure out very quickly that the game becomes extremely smooth. And the reason why it becomes smooth is because the game is 49 gig, and it needs to access all the time a lot of details because they have worked really hard at making the details of every single house in Paris uh, to be fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. So you can climb any house, you can get into the house, so this is a lot of data. So when you walk around the, the subsystem of storage and the processor, you need to work hard to provide you things in between the frames to avoid jerkiness. So you saw it by yourself, right? We went through the entire uh, um, Notre Dame de Paris, uh, Cathedral, we went around, we climbed it, we downloaded the entire city, and there's still no jerkiness when you use the right subsystem. So, the advice is make sure you balance your things. Before you go and buy a second GPU, make sure you have all of your storage up and running with the game installed on the very fast SSD, not on a drive next to it. And then your user experience will be fantastic with Unity as well. Yeah, you were mentioning that you know some people had you know SLI setups and they're still reporting jerkiness, and you were saying that people need to be educated that it's actually the storage that is sort of becoming the bottleneck at that yes, point. Yes, right? because you know it's so large now, and, and you know most law is going to drive all of those games to become extremely detailed. So in the future, you can expect the the, the, the amount of storage required to run a game to explode, and if you have very low latency, you can serve all of those things to your processor and GPU that light speed and you don't you don't wait for those things anymore so jerkiness goes away okay yeah it's interesting because i think most people when they think about like loading textures and things like that it's generally associated with like vram and things like that but yeah, it's becoming much more dependent with these large games you know yeah. 50 gigs and that's very important that people balance their machines they if they don't they are going to hit uh, the bottleneck of the drive and then when you don't have the data then the graphic card need to stop and wait for the data okay and then if I can ask you uh, one last thing, and, and you don't have to answer, but I, I think I kind of have to you know, ask it, is, uh, you know, uh, this is getting awfully close to, like, you know, Skylake and things like that, and are we sort of, like, in the desktop space, or is this sort of getting a little, little too, um, kind of bunched up? No. So, is, is there room for both? So and, yeah. Broadwell is for gamers, Broadwell H is for gamers that want to play without having a massive budget, mm -hmm. and you're going to get... Skylake is going to come and budget-wise is going to be reasonable from you know, from the bottom to extreme edition. Uh, but you know the only thing I can tell you about Skylake is we're going to see you next you know later this year, <laughs> okay. and we are going to have a really big smile when we show it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Francois. Thank you.